Hello, welcome to the Book Fix podcast, formerly known as Story and Things, a podcast where we fix lives one book at a time. Thank you very much. <laughs> I am your host, Chelly. And I'm your host, Yahaira. Or Yahaira, whatever whatever floats your boat, honestly. Yahaira, I don't know. Yahaira. I don't know if I've ever mentioned, like, this is something that I have to go through every single day of my life, where I'm meeting someone or whatever, and they'll be like, oh, what's your name? And I'll say, oh, it's Yahida, because, you know, I'll say it, you know, the way my mother meant for it to be said. Yeah. And if they're course. like, if they like are apprehensive, or if they look at me like, I'm sorry, what? Mm. I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. Yahira. Whatever crazy. you prefer. It's crazy because when I talk about you at work, because you're, Mm -hmm. you know, the main point of my conversation all the time at work. I knew it. (laughs) I always say your name like Yahaira. Like I say it the way God intended. Oh, my God. You do? (laughs) Yeah, because I don't know. It just feels right. But then when I'm with you, I call you Yahaira. Because it just feels like tiny, meek loving yeah. i don't know yeah. i actually don't know <laughs> <laughs> no because i don't know because you call me chelly or chelly yeah i don't know how you say it i call you chelly <laughs> chelly i call you i call you chili actually because that's what my phone auto corrects your name too really mine no, mine not, can pronounce not anymore your name. actually yeah you're you know i don't know if mine can pronounce your name because i don't i don't have you as that i don't have you as that either what do you have me as i still have you under yobo because we did that like a long time ago and I never changed it. <laughs> That's so sweet of you. Did I ever tell you? Because I used to have you under that too. And my uh-huh. sister used to think we were dating. <laughs> really? And what about yeah. it? <laughs> I know. It's like, wait, we were? Oh, I mean. Uh, I, thought, I thought we were. No. You know what's so funny? <laughs> now that you're you saying were. that, can I can I confess something to you really quickly? Yes. So... My mom sometimes calls you my girlfriend. <laughs> like, she'll be like, if she tells someone that I'm going to see you, she'll be like, oh, she's just visiting her girlfriend. Dude, oh my God. And then, oh my God. And then I don't even remember how she said it. But the last time that I went to go see you, I don't remember. No, I think I said that I was going to go see you the weekend of Thanksgiving. Yeah. And she was like, oh my God, why don't you marry her already? I was like, I mean, <laughs> Damn. Oh my god, wait, mom, don't tempt me. Mom, is this your blessing? Wait. <laughs> Dude, that kind of reminds me of um that one TikTok that's like these two girls and they're both best friends. And one of them's mm-hmm. like, okay, here here's our plan. Here's our plan. We go to my parents' house and we tell them that we're moving to Oregon. And we also um convince them that we're lesbians there's really no point in that but i would just think that it's really funny and we Uh convince them that we're together and then the other friend's like scratch that scratch that love the plan but what if we were lesbian (laughs) i think i have seen that that's That's so cute that could be us that could literally be us we're going to oregon now (laughs) oh my god that's that's so funny but that's how close that's how close we are right like that people are like oh Hold on. I think, yeah, I think now is a good time to say that that sometimes I don't know why I come off as mean on the podcast because we're actually really close. What do you mean? What did you say to me? Sometimes I feel like I make jokes and I'm like, you know, the jokes I make where it's like, oh, we don't talk after the podcast. When the camera turns off, we turn off. Like, (laughs) I'm just out the door already. She kicked me out. (laughs) We've known each other for a decade, dude. Yeah, a whole ass decade. I can't say that for anybody else. That's crazy. Oh, God. It's crazy. More to come. Can't wait for our mm. second decade when we're still the same age. <laughs> oh, we don't age, actually. We're vampires. Yeah. I'm Benjamin buttoning this. I'm going to be a freaking fetus. Ew. Ugh. <laughs> Gross. You wouldn't be friends with me if I was a fetus. Girl, I'm... <laughs> I was looking I'm at... I'm allergic to well... feti. <laughs> You know, I i don't know if the listeners know this, but I'm in an ultrasound class. So all I'm looking at right now are fetuses. Please don't oh do this God. to me. I don't know if the podcast knows this, but I look at fetus. <laughs> what? I, guess, I was going to say, I look at fetus times 12. <laughs> That's what I'm fucking dealing with. 
what? <laughs> times 12 years in age. Times 12 years in age. Oh, I thought you meant times 12 as in 12 fetuses. <laughs> it's like, why are all 12 of them in front of you? <laughs> <laughs> so I weird. I wish there were only 12 of them. But <laughs> here anyway, we are. Anyway, she's, she's a teacher, if you're, if you're wondering. They're Thank probably you. confused by that. Thank you. I love my job. But I also love this podcast, which is why it's so great that we're doing this on a Thursday now. I think that it would be nice for us to experiment with posting two a week now that we've gotten comfortable posting remotely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, although I do miss you, but I feel like this is going to be like convenient for the both of us. That way we don't have to worry about having to set up everything and you having to feed me or whatever. Not to add fuel to, like, your mom calling me your girlfriend, but distance makes the heart fonder. (gasps) What are you trying to say? You need a distance between us? (gasps) No, I think it's kind of beautiful. (gasps) Oh, my God. I'm going to (laughs) cry. We didn't mention it in the last podcast, but Mm -hmm. we still have our social media. But because Story and Things is now resting six feet underground, (laughs) we did rename all of our social medias. And I'm only going to promote TikTok right now because that's the one we're the most active on. But um, please visit our TikToks because Yahira and I are trying so hard to be as active as fucking possible on social media. And honestly, I think we're doing a good ass job. Yeah. You know, considering both of our busy ass schedules, I think we're doing great. So if you want to follow us on TikTok, become our friends, watch our videos. I think we're pretty funny together. Um, It's Mm -hmm. at The Book Fix on TikTok, at T-H-E-B-O-O-K-F-I-X. Yeah, and Instagram is the same, but at the end we have pod. So T-H-E-B-O-O-K-F-I-X-P-O-D. The same thing. The Book Fix pod. Yeah, that. Mm -hmm. So please, because we we are out there working our ass off. (laughs) <laughs> nine to five nine to five um, not really but <laughs> yeah but i mean i'm very i'm not, i was gonna say happy but i feel like i want to say orgullosa oh <laughs> my god <laughs> this this week like it's it's tapped into my sangre dude and to whoever's watching we're going this, back to the roots <laughs> <laughs> me dude me gente like i'm so <laughs> excited to talk about our current book which is the sun bear trials by aiden thomas Mm -hmm. and he wrote the cemetery boys which we haven't read yet but um our mutual friend melissa she had told well she told me i don't know she told you but she was like i think you would really like it yes oh my gosh we're here we're here, and we're here. I don't know if we were allowed to be bilingual, but it is our podcast. Y so, creo que debemos I, hacer lo que le da la gana. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> are you going to translate that? In a nice way, it means I'll do what I want. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Um, yes. So, let's just make it known right now. If we say things in Spanish, don't worry about it. It's fine. You'll okay. get it. You'll catch on. Yeah, and also context clues that shit. <laughs> literally okay so <laughs> okay. normally we start off our episodes by doing a quick summary which you know doesn't contain many spoilers but this time i decided to make it a little bit longer because i want to get like the gist of this world that aiden thomas created and it's still not really spoilers though because all of this information is in the first like two chapters so in this story soul is the creator of this world And after creating things like the mountains, the oceans, the rivers, they created Tierra, which translates to land. And together, Sol and Tierra created a race of godly children. But unfortunately, they were as vain as they were powerful, and they're known as the Golds. So they tried again, and they created Jades, which were kind, but a little too focused on finding ways to channel their powers. And so Mm -hmm. Tierra and Sol tried again. And they created the Obsidians, which they were passionate but selfish. They were more interested in destroying their home rather than building it. So 
tired of creating gods, soul went down into earth and planted their heart beneath the ground, which then created the humans. And due to their like short existence, you know, their short lifespans, humans held mm-hmm. more compassion and empathy and they loved more fiercely than all of the gods combined. So soul tasked the gods to care for the humans, but each wanted to do so differently. So of course it created a little bit of tension. So soul created this like seven pointed star made out of clay and then they basically broke the star and it was like parts of power and Mm -hmm. every one of their children had to collect the parts that like they wanted and Mm -hmm. i know that jade collected the ones that were most precious gold Mm -hmm. collected the ones that were most valuable and obsidian collected and hid it super deep into the earth yeah, and they pretty much like collected like the the dust. Yeah. The obsidians were Loki jealous of Soul's love for humanity, so they stole Soul's heart, which the heart was what warmed the earth. And in order to save humanity, Soul drove a dagger into their own chest, and when the last drop of blood drained from them, their body, no, from their own body, they reappeared on the sky as a brilliant star. As the sun, Sol was able to trap the obsidians in a celestial binding, but they were really only able to do this during the day. So Tierra created soul stones that would remain ignited for a decade, and they would keep the obsidians from escaping their prisons. With every decade, there are sunbearer trials where a group of 10 semi-dioses, mainly golds, are picked by soul and they must compete in a set of trials and the loser will be killed by the winner in order to emulate the sacrifice that soul made and this will keep the soul stones ignited. So our main character, Theo, isn't really worried about it because he's a jade and jades aren't really picked to partake in these trials. So imagine his surprise when he isn't the only jade soul chose for this year's Sunbear trials. Yes. And there you go. Exactly. That's pretty much my summary. Because I just wanted to introduce the world mainly. And just a little bit yeah. of the tension that Theo is going through. Yes. And just to like kind of re-mention it. Um, because there's different types of people. The golds, the obsidians, the jades, and the mortals. Um, there is a lot of tension in everyday life. So even though our main character Theo... Um, is a jade and is a semidios jades are considered a little lower so Theo Mm -hmm. is more so like a mortal than the golds are which the gold are kind of treated like hella celebrities like they Mm -hmm. they are above everyone else and they live away from the mortals too Mm -hmm. there's a lot of tension in this book Mm -hmm. but i do recommend because that's just like the tip of the iceberg go mm-hmm. read this book before you listen to our podcast because we are going to spoil the hell yeah out of this we're book. gonna hella spoil and honestly this is the type of book that i would say you should read it because like there is a twist that wouldn't be so twisty if you already knew what happens yes Pretty much. Um, And I would recommend this book if you enjoyed, I don't know, like the Percy Jackson series, if you enjoyed Hunger Games, like if you enjoy like those types of stories, then I would definitely recommend this one. And this one is um, a fantasy and it does have LGBTQIA+. The jokes. (laughs) And we can talk more about it as we go along. But you can tell by the type of writing, like who the audience is, you know? Yeah. Go ahead. But before we start, Yahira and I always try to guess each other's ratings of the book because we don't tell each other how we feel about it. Mm-hmm. It's funny because I had a question about the ending and Yahira was like, I'm not telling you how I feel. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, because um, I called her and she was like, I have I have questions about this book before we start. And I was like, well, I'm not going to tell you how I feel about it. So don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would like for you to make the guess first. You want me to guess first? Okay, fun. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know if Chelly explained it. We don't tell each other? Did, did you say that already? Yes, I'm sorry. I already did. I like blanked out for a second. Okay. <laughs> sorry, I blank out when you talk, but... <laughs> no, I Go don't. Ahead. Shut up. <laughs> um, let me guess. So I... we Okay, 
confession session. We were supposed to talk about another book, and I decided to talk about this book instead because I read the summary, and I was like, oh my god, I feel like Chelly would love this book because, you know, I know how much you love Is that why you did it? Yeah, because I was like, oh my god, I know how much she loves Percy Jackson. I feel like this is up her alley. I had no idea what this book was really about. Like, I just kind of knew it, like, you know, based on the surface. So when I looked into it, I was like, this would be a really good fantasy for us to talk about. And plus, you know, it has Mexican culture in it. So Mm -hmm. I thought you would really like this book. I'm a little nervous (laughs) to hear what you think about it. But I'm going to say that my guess was correct i feel like you would give this um i don't know how much you love ya books but i still think you enjoyed it overall because of theo's character and the love Mm -hmm. story like the romance and i think like the trials you probably enjoyed that too so i'm gonna guess that you gave it a five Whoa. Oh my god, I'm nervous. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't look at you. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that you also love this book. I think that you appreciate just like the Latino Latina vibes because I don't know if our viewers, our listeners know this. Both of you and I <laughs> are gente <laughs> who are represented <laughs> in this book. <laughs> <laughs> so most hint it. Uh-huh, that's so true. Yeah. I don't I don't know what you consider yourself. Like I don't know if you call yourself Chicana. <laughs> but um I call myself that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, very good representation. Um, mm-hmm. so I think you you think this book is good. But I don't know if you liked certain aspects with the writing. So I think it's like, it's not even the story or the characters. I think you had an issue with the writing Mm. and I don't know if it bothered you enough to like, like, you know, lower your rating by a lot, but I'm going to play it. I'm going to actually, I was going to play it safe, but no, today's all about danger. (laughs) (laughs) We're living life on the edge. (laughs) I'm going to say you gave it a four out of five. So our main character is Theo. He is the son of uh, un diosa. Una, I'm sorry, una diosa. Sorry for my Una Spanish. diosa. Her name is Quetzal. Yeah, and she is the goddess of the birds. Mm-hmm. And it's just the birds, right? She's yeah, no birds. other animal. Okay, just birds. <laughs> and love that about her, by the way. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Off, off tangent. Love that about her because it reminded me of my Animal Crossing world, Bird Nation. Thank you. So, oh my god, I, I forgot about that. <laughs> So you so love Quetzal. I, yeah, I do love Quetzal. And Theo is a very interesting character because Theo was born a jade, born more mortal than others, at least, you know, always grouped with mortals because even though they are semi-dioses, um, Theo is an example of someone who, even though they're semi-dioses, they still have to go to normal school. They still have to mm-hmm. experience normal life and don't really get the luxury that the golds get being semi-dioses. Yeah, and we like, see. Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. And we see kind of this hatred and frustration that Thale had towards the golds right at the very beginning because mm-hmm. Thale and Thale's birds are like fucking <laughs> vandalizing pictures they're- of these golds. Yeah. Because they're fucking love it. treated as celebrities, like Chelly said. So a lot of the humans around this, what is it called? Reino del Sol. They're yeah. kind of like placing bets on which of the golds, the semi-dioses that are golds, are going to be picked to be in the Sunbury Trials. Because it's a big deal, so everyone knows about it. And so there's a whole bunch of posters of these like semi-dioses, and he, these are the ones that they think are going to do it because also their stats, because they're celebrities, their stats are public. So everybody knows like, oh, this one's really good at their strength. This one's more strategy. So everyone knows what everyone's good at. So that's how they can like assume like, oh, who would be Mm -hmm. the best sun bear for the year, for the decade, I mean. Yeah. And like I said, I, 
I really enjoy Dale's character at the beginning of the story because Dale fucking hates it and does not put up with it. And you can I tell the type of person. I don't oh, go think ahead. he hates it. I don't know if he hates it. I feel like he's just I think more the right like word frustrated. Is fed up. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is just frustration because Dale doesn't think the golds deserve to be that like, like up on a pedestal. Mm hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I also really liked that moment in the beginning when there's like a fire that breaks out in his place or like in like his place, like his like because every Dios has their own like, I don't know if you would say like their own reino, their own little like temple your own fucking area, barrio. their own. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally, literally, some of them did like they were described as a barrio. It was so funny, but so like in his like you know bird area, <laughs> there was a fire that broke out, and obviously he was like, "I'm not a gold. I shouldn't like bust in there and save people." But he felt compelled to because he knew that there was someone inside, and so he went in there. But as he was like trying to save this person, the golds show up because they always show up when there's like you know, shit going wrong. And in this moment, you also can tell that he also feels this animosity or this like anger or whatever frustration because an old friend is a goal that he no longer talks to. Mm -hmm. In Theo, we, we see this, like even as Theo's character continues and they do get into the sun bear trials and they do mm -hmm. experience um, having to be, kind of treated like a gold in a weird way not not mm -hmm. like in the way where they're respected but gets to see what golds grew up with um we see in our character thale that they remain very true to themselves mm -hmm. like if they want a certain thing a certain way that's how they stick with it because this is a very public event so thale was going because also one of his closest friend is a gold which crazy right but like She's different though. She's not. She's not all about that celebrity life. <laughs> so yeah, she's he, a gold, but she's vibing. Yeah, she's a cool gold, not a regular one. And so he is so worried that she's going to be picked to be in the Sun Bearer trials. So he's not even thinking like, oh my god, I should worry about myself. So he's like anxious when he realizes that she gets picked, and he gets picked. But he's also worried that another Jade gets picked because this Jade is like 13 years old. So he takes it on himself to like pretty much like protect this 13 year old. And even as the trials go on, which maybe we'll talk about him a little bit later, but uh, he doesn't really even care about winning. It's more about like, oh, I just want to make sure that he, this 13 year old doesn't get in last place or else he'll be the sacrifice, right? Overall, though, I think Thale's character is really good. A very mm -hmm. good main character. And just want to mention that it is LGBTQ repre representation because Thale is a trans man. Mm hmm. Yeah. So I love Thale so much. So, so, so much. <laughs> what about you? Do you no, love Thale? I, yeah, this is actually really... going to say a lot about our friendship. <laughs> Oh my God, shut up. No, I really did love though. I was so like when he was introduced in that whole moment with the fire and everything, like, and, and not even just that, but also how he would react with the priest, Huemek. Yes. yes. How he was with Huemek, because he was late, obviously. And so uh, Huemek was like looking at a telescope and he's like looking at the planets and he's like, they're telling me you're late. And he's like, you needed a telescope to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just think he's so funny. Like, I love him so much. And I love that even throughout, like, the story and, like, all of, like, the trials and everything that was happening, he was so, like, he was just a good person. Yeah. And that's what I really, what I really liked about him. Who do you want to talk about next? Um, God, there's just so many. I mean, we can briefly talk about um Nia. the, uh, like, other characters. Yeah, we could talk about Nia. So Nia is... Um, Nia is daughter of Tierra, which is the god of Earth. And she is like this buff, <laughs> really, really strong semi dios. And she's just like, she's just like the fun friend. Like she, I think that this story plays in a lot of like, 
oh, if you have a lot of muscles, you're lacking in brain cells, pretty much. Yeah. Like, it's it's one or the other. You know, pick one. It's, pick one. It's so funny, too, because there's, like, this one part where Nia's talking to Theo, and it's mm-hmm. like, you're, like, 25% human, 25% jade, and 25% bird. And <laughs> Theo was like, or not Theo, Shio was like, Where's, what, what happened to the other 25%? It's like, oh, don't bring that up. She's bad at math. It's like, yeah, that's one of my one of my insecurities. I do remember that part. That part was so funny. And I love how um there was a moment where she relied on Theo to come up with the plan. And he was like, When did I become the plan person? And she's like, Cause you're the plan guy. Come on. And then like she says, Come on, you're the brains to my brawn. <laughs> I just love that they're so like perfect together because you know obviously she's the strength and yes. Theo is not. He's brains pretty much. But to add to that too, they they do um, kind of bring in a third friend into their group, and it's the Jade, the other Jade that was picked for the Sunbear trial. Yeah, the thirteen-year-old. Is- yeah, Shio. Yeah, Shio is a 13-year-old and he seems very anxious. He's just always very nervous because obviously he should not have been picked. Well, you know, because most of the time it's the golds that are picked. So it's like very weird that two jades are picked in this set of trials. He's the son of Mala Suerte, which is the dios of bad luck. What a fucking dad to have. It's like, I mean, my dad is Timoteo. Who's your dad? He's like, oh, (laughs) fucking bad luck. I know. Don't <laughs> fucking look at me because I will fucking make a rain cloud appear on top of your head right now. I don't know. What is bad luck? Like, that could literally mean anything. <laughs> like, literally I anything know. could be. Oh, I remember. Okay, to give you guys an example, one of the things was when, uh, cause she always also trans. So he's, um, at the moment, I, cause there was a moment where he wasn't really sure what he was, you know, uh, he, she wasn't really sure where he like fit. In, like, if he was male or non binary, so uh, at the moment he is male, I guess. And there was a moment that is revealed where he would be picked on a lot, and all of the people who picked on him got lice the next day. So, I feel like that's a really good example of him being the son of bad luck. I fucking love that. I love that. <laughs> And, but it sucks too because so much of what this character goes through because by the way that trio with with shio fucking love them i yeah. fucking love yeah. them and it made I, me so sad uh, because nia and theo they they were on it you know they were mm-hmm. in it to win it and they were doing mm-hmm. so well and they always it always seemed like shio got left behind not because they wanted to but it's literally just the bad luck yeah that and also sometimes in the trials like they couldn't all stay together like it was near impossible so they had to leave him behind even though they really didn't want to like they wanted him to at least be in the middle realm because e- after every trial they would be graded and whoever remains on the last one would be the sacrifice pretty much and it's so weird because even though he's the son of mala suerte he also seemed like he had a lot of like bad luck And you would think it would be the other way around. Like, he would just be giving it and not having it. But he did say at the beginning, like, my only power is bad luck. Yeah, well, that that, and also he he was also kind of like, I don't really know what my power or what my ability is. I don't really know what it is. I love Shio (laughs) so much. I loved him, too, especially because he's only 13. Oh, so I didn't mention it, but um, anyone between 13 and 20? Or 18? Yeah. Tw- uh, 13 and 18, I think, can be picked How old to is be Theo? in the trial. Theo, everyone is sev- pretty much everyone is 17. Okay. Almost everyone, anyway. Now we're going through, you know, who who's in these trials, right? So the next person that we could talk about would be Chochi, which is the yes. daughter, daughter of Primavera, which is the daughter of Spring. She is obviously a gold, and she's like a... She's a a very like renowned gold and she grows yeah. flowers, you know, anything with like, you know, spring is is basically her like she's like sprouting vines and all that shit. Yeah. Um so she's also in the trials. Who else is in the trials? De Desi? 
Yeah, Desi is in it, and Desi is son of Amor, which is the goddess of love. And he's deaf, so I really liked how in the book, a lot of the things that they were saying, like, they would mention, like, oh, they had to sign it as well for Desi. Mm-hmm. I really like Desi. Out of all, like, mm-hmm. the side characters, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Desi was so, like, precious. I also really liked, um, what was his name? Ma- Ma- Marino? Mariano? Oh, Mariano, yes. Yes, I really liked him, too. Which he's the son of Agua, so the yes. goddess of water. The other smaller, I guess, side character would be Atsi, which is the daughter of Tormentoso, so the god of the weather, pretty much. Yes. Um. Actually, I think she is the she's the youngest one, so she's also the same age as Shio, but she's younger than him. Really? mm Hmm. Yeah. So I thought, I think it's really cool though, because um, her moments in the book where she would just be fucking like pulling out rain clouds and lightning and shit. I was like, oh my God, I love this girl. I wish that, I wish that this gets turned into a movie so I could see all of these moments. Yeah, dude, it felt very like well explained. And it's Mm -hmm. so funny because it's been so long since I've read The Hunger Games and it's a weird thing to bring up, but they're very similar. And I kind mm-hmm. of miss reading books like this. Yeah, yeah. It's so fun, huh? Like, just to see um, people competing over whatever the fuck. I really liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? Who else is a side character that I haven't mentioned? Oh, the bad one. You can mention the, the sa- kind, of, kind of a baddie, kind of a villain, kind of a misunderstood one. Who are you talking about? Ocelo! You don't remember Ocelo? The child of Guerrero? What, like, he's the... Oh, he's yes! The one, with, the one that... He's okay, the one, yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry. I was gone. The, now I'm here. He's the one with the cats, pretty much. He's the jaguar. Yes, um, I do remember. He is pretty much a freaking force, man. He is the force, actually. No one mm-hmm. messed with him. He's kind of like... He's very, like, confident. He's, like, ruthless. He would be, I guess, more of the villain, but, you know, they're all kind of... They're all competing for this, so I guess it doesn't really count, but... Yes. That's basically all of our our golds, though. Yes, those are all of our golds and our jades. Um, but the last one that I think would tie in more with, like, I guess the... The bigger part of this story would be the children of Lumbre, Mm -hmm. which is the twins. So Aurelio and Auristela, um, which which we already. First of all, (laughs) first Uh of all, A plus names. I know. I freaking love their names. Literally, Mm -hmm. like, I'm obsessed with their names. They're so pretty. So we already mentioned um, Aurelio a little bit, I think. Anyway, so he's the one who used to be friends with Theo, and they kind of, like, grew apart. Now he's a gold, so he's too famous. He's too famous they for grew Jade. Apart. <laughs> they grew <laughs> apart because he was a gold, right? Like, he was taken mm-hmm. to where the so, golds have to go, which is, like, a special school. Yeah, and so Aurelio and Aristela pretty much were raised by their mortal dad, which is how the, he was able to be friends with Theo. But once they reach the age, which I'm assuming it's like probably 12 or 13 or around there, yeah. the mother, which is Diosa Lumbre, which is the goddess of fire, she pretty much took them and integrated them into the gold's world. And Diosa Lumbre is pretty much like she's the most ruthless god there like she is so mean she's so like i don't know like she just wants them to all to be separated she doesn't want them to be integrated with the jades and so because of because of how she is and you know her high expectations for both of her kids that's why aurelio acts the way that he does like he just wants to pretty much make his mom proud in a way but that that's how they grew apart because of the mom I really like those types of characters that are very aware of their image because Mm -hmm. Aurelio is often said to be very like a placid face. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And 
when cameras are around, the very picture perfect smile. And yeah, he's oh, he's always on. Like if there's a camera, he's just able to pretend, right? He fakes it until he makes it. And, and it's funny because there's even moments where like the character does out of character things, but when they're mm-hmm. going to, they're like, What the fuck are we doing? Like we're supposed to stay here on the boat. Why are we leaving the boat? And it's like you don't no, have to I, follow all the rules. Yeah, but I really like how Aurelio just always like kind of knows what to do. Like obviously we're not in his point of view, right? Like we're more in Theo's point of view. But there were moments when Theo was just like, "What the fuck do I do now?" And he looks over, and Aurelio's just like figuring shit out. Like he just knows what to do. I know, and it's it's funny because we have this very calm character, cool, collected, mm-hmm. always viewed as being like an asshole, but they're just like that. Uh-huh. Um. Or they're just serious. Like, yeah, but very polar opposite to um, Auristela. Because yeah. she's mean. <laughs> she's, she is just as ruthless as Ocelo is, if not a little bit more. So Auristela is here for the game. Like She is so confident. She's so proud of herself. Because in one of the trials, she gets first place and she can't even, she can't even contain herself, which is really like out of character from the other characters' point of views. So they're just like, oh my god, okay, we get it, Auristela. You won, I guess. But... <laughs> Um, yeah, she is really mean. She obviously thinks she's better than the Jades. Like, she just makes them feel like they're just collateral damage. She's just like, you guys are the obvious sacrifice. Like, you might as well just get used to it. Like, get ready for it, pretty much. Yeah. And uh, throughout the story, there's also a lot of moments where Aristela will say things to Aurelio like, see, I told you he was using you. See, I told you that he doesn't, you know, like, trying to make it seem like Theo doesn't actually care for Aurelio, mm-hmm. because I I don't know, like she just probably can't imagine someone caring for her brother the way that she does. Yeah, and it sucks too because like at the beginning of the book, you view Aristela like very just I guess bitchy. Like it, mm-hmm. it, like I can't think of another word except for that. But like it's revealed like throughout both of these characters, like their growth. Aurelio didn't have anyone else Mm -hmm. and the twins didn't have anyone else. They were born into this fame and they had to act the part, meaning Mm -hmm. that they could never really have a normal childhood, normal friends. They couldn't do anything. They couldn't even have candy. Like it was. Yeah. It's so much was taken away from them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And knowing that, (laughs) because I, Mm -hmm. I knew, I don't know if you know this about me, but I fucking love Aurelio. (laughs) <laughs> I love him too. Uh, yeah, but I, I think I, mm-hmm. no knowing their upbringing, mm-hmm. um, I appreciate them a lot more. Yeah, and I mean, don't get me wrong, Aristela did some fucked up shit. Like, just like she's just that bitch. You know what I mean? Um, mm. but I just really felt for her. There's this trial where they have to collect stones. And there's, like, this, like, soul stone, right, that'll give you the most points. And she's, like, so focused on getting it, but she's getting it for her brother, which I just feel like says so much about her character. That even though she comes off as this really mean person, she really wants to do this for her brother. And Mm. we learn that the reason why she wants her brother to take this stone is so that their mother will actually like respect him will will actually like care for him because the mom does care for Auristela I guess in her own way but with Aurelio like she does not she's just so mean to him yeah so I don't know like I just really appreciated Auristela's character after that reveal happened Mm -hmm. and I mean that's all of our characters and I think we could be here for fucking days Talking about Honestly. every chunk of this story. Honestly. And I I just want to say that the love story between Aurelio and Theo was so fucking cute. It was Thank just you. one of it's just one of those things where anytime something would happen between them, I was like, oh fuck. Yes. You know what? Give me the one bed trope. I need that shit. <laughs> where the fuck? 
are all of my cliches that I, I'm always tired of. But you know what? All of a sudden, I but need I every single right one now. of them. <laughs> I need every single one of them right now. Dude, I yeah. fucking loved that entire scene of them sneaking off the boat. I know. It was so fucking cute. Fucking enjoying the- masa panes together. <laughs> And the limoni sal, and then he was like, "What the fuck is this seawater?" I know Aurelio was just like, "What the fuck is this?" And it was so cute because the whole reason they snuck out was because Theo wanted to get candy for Nia. So it wasn't even like for himself. Okay, maybe kind of for himself, but he, that's just like how his character is that that he's thinking about Nia, you know, like in her well being, and yeah. so. Aurelio went with him and you know what I really loved too like after they did this whole trip Aurelio bought candy but not for himself he bought candy for everyone else like all of the contestants yeah because eventually eventually they kind of become friends kind of sort of a little bit yes but yeah that was really cute I fucking loved it I think it's so cute um Aurelio just really cares about Theo like a lot Mm -hmm. and it's it was super it's super super slow and there's not really much Uh -uh. that has happened in this book Mm -mm. but like there's most likely I don't know if the second book is out already or did this this just came out right yeah this just came out don't you remember when we had our Barnes and Nobles trip we went to San Jose and I believe wait was it the San Jose one I can't remember but I think it was when we were at San Jose where I saw the book cover and I was like, oh, my God, I really want to read this. Remember the yes. gold version? Yes. Mm-hmm. I can definitely see, I mean, their their relationship building in the future. But fuck, mm-hmm. dude, this book, the ending. <laughs> oh, my God, dude, when the ending happened. Wait, can I just say, Can I, can we just... Let's be honest for one second, okay? Okay. I need you to be honest with me, okay? I'm a little nervous, okay. Obviously, I feel like we both knew that the sun bearer was going to be Theo. Yes or no? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Who did you think was going to be the sacrifice before the sacrifice was revealed? I thought the sacrifice was going to be Shio. So did I. I was so... Did you think the same thing? Yeah, because because like near the end, like at, in the first couple of trials, like they were doing all right, but um, then near the end, Shio was just getting losses after losses after losses. Dude, I was like, oh my god, I this fucking boy felt so bad because I have the physical copy. So when I was reading it, there would be scenes where it was like, oh, Shio was standing with all the other um sun bear contestants and they're all looking for their alebrijes and then mm. freaking Shio dropped it and it's so embarrassing because everyone's standing there and I'm like fuck everyone's I feel just so looking at bad him. for Shio dude I felt so bad for him too because he literally just had so much bad luck and I don't know like I thought that there would be more bad luck towards the other contestants like like more obvious bad luck but I was like damn he's really just like failing because of him he, like his own abilities yes before we talk about the ending though mm. i do want to say i am a little disappointed that no one died oh my god here we go again <laughs> girl it's ya <laughs> i know it is do people I know die in ya yes Yes, people Name can die in YA. People, people die in real life. Like, I, I think... I, oh, oh, sorry. Spoiler. Well, I mean, okay. Yes, they could die. I just felt like the death of a character would have been very impactful. Whether yeah, it has who's? been Shio or Nia. Nia would have been a good one. Um, I mean... I am not saying I don't like her, but Auristela, you know, could have been a good one. Well, I mean, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> I guess who knows I now. I can't with you. I swear. <laughs> when did you become so heartless that you want no, a character I just, to die? I just think it. W- <laughs> I think it would have been impactful because, like, if you think about the Hunger Games, characters died in that one, and it was very yeah, often, but not in the first one. Yes. Yes, in the first one. How'd they make it out? People they had to all die. Did, actually. Oh, sorry. That was just a fanfic. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, oh that was that a fanfic away real quick. I wrote, actually. 
don't out me. <laughs> um, no, okay. In part, I do agree with you. Yes, a, the death of a character would be very impactful, especially because I grew to really care about most of these characters. But I don't know. Maybe it could happen in the second one. You don't know. Yeah, maybe. I just wish it would have started strong. I don't know. You can't give me a freaking battle royale and not kill anyone. Like, what do you expect this mm-hmm. is? <laughs> not a battle royale, obviously. Before we talk about the ending, there was something happening during these trials. So these trials would happen, right? And at first it was all fun and games, whatever. But then Theo notices a little bit of blackness in these characters' eyes. Oh, mm. you're right. What did you think was happening when that was happening? Because the char- the characters were getting kind of like, I guess, corrupted in a way. So their, their um, emotions were very heightened. And so they would get really angry with each other and they would turn a little bit violent, which was out of character for all of them, except maybe Ocelo. Mm-hmm. I was under the impression that this was something that the Golds just experienced because it was said by Aurelio that the Golds were raised for this fight. Like they trained for this specifically. So I just thought that as a Jade, they all was just seeing it happen and like, oh my God, what the fuck is wrong with these guys? Mm. That's what I thought. Really? Because I had this thought that maybe soul's power was weakening at a faster rate because the way that these characters were acting like i don't know if you remember when aristella like freaking pinned down theo's wings and yes. she was like being super violent with him and when she's like she obviously snapped out of it and she seemed so confused like she seemed surprised by her own actions so yes. there were like moments like that where i was like oh my God, maybe the obsidians are like somehow breaking from their binds already. Like that's what I thought was happening. I thought that they were already like getting into, you know, Reino del Sol. And that's why these characters were getting corrupted. But then there was this other thing that I was guessing. I was like, what if Soul's not like all good? Like what if Soul's like, you know what? I just want some tea. I want some drama. I want to see. Yeah, I'm actually real good. I just love watching these. I know. I just want to see some drama. So that's what I had like those two thoughts. I was like, maybe Soul's like not that nice. Maybe yeah. they just want to fuck some shit up. Can we blame them? They've been up there for how long? Very long time. <laughs> Damn. Dude. But um, okay, so let's get to the ending now. So let me just set it up. So pretty much, surprise, the Owens. <laughs> he is yeah, the sun bearer. And um, and the Jade hero. Exactly. So who came in last? The one who Freaking would hurt the most. Auristela. Why would it hurt the most? Because Theo loves Aurelio. Aurelio loves Auristela. Obviously, Theo having to kill Auristela would be like the biggest heartbreak to Aurelio because that's all that Aurelio has. Like he loves and his it sister. it sucks too because Aurelio kind of breaks his own character. Mm. Yeah, and he's he does. just like, you knew that this was going to happen. Why did you let this happen? And it's mm-hmm. like, yes, yeah. I understand the frustration, but even mm-hmm. Dale told you from the start that this is what the game is and you knew that it was going to be this, yet you're only reacting now when it affects you. Yeah, because he was okay with it because he thinks, like, oh, this is a sacrifice for soul, right? And he's very like, law abiding i guess like you said before so he's always following the rules but i feel like he never really questioned it until this moment because also in the last trial um theo aristela and chochi and i can't remember a desi and somebody else did not actually finish the trial and aristela was one of them who fell from you know the finish line or fell away from it or something and Dale could have saved her. I I was actually surprised that he didn't save her, but he could have saved her, but he was kind of like more preoccupied on Shio that he saved Shio instead. And because of that, that's why, well, that's why they're assuming that Aristela got last instead of Shio. And Mm. so that's why Aurelio is also reacting because he's like, you could have saved her, but you didn't, 
you know, because because once you made it to the finish line, you can't go back. So he was already past that. Like he he couldn't go back for her. Yeah. It sucked. It hurt me <laughs> so much. Um, dude, the angst is so real in this moment. So then they were going to have this ceremony, right? Like everyone's so excited. They're going to give mm-hmm. him this special like dagger with souls, whatever on it. And he's going to kill her. He's going to put this dagger straight through her heart. And he's like about to do it. But he's like, you know what? All of a sudden... I don't feel like doing it. (laughs) I was going to do it. But you know what? The sun just was not in the right place. And (laughs) so everyone's there. But like all of the semi-dioses, all of their parents, like everyone is there. I think even the mortals are there. And he doesn't do it. So he's like about to like, okay, you know what? I'm going to run out of here, sprint. And then Shio uh, shows up and he's like, oh, just hand me the dagger. Like I'll take it and like they're looking into each other's eyes and like the Theo was already like you know what he's gonna take the dagger he's gonna run and then I'm gonna run the other way or whatever and then when Chio takes the dagger his demeanor completely shifts yeah <laughs> bro before we go on can I just tell you I fucking love books that have betrayals oh my god i eat that shit up i'm just like i know i'm just like but i wish he could have been someone yes. else <laughs> who nia <laughs> no it just hurt because shia was so small he was so small he was just a boy I know. but so wait yeah. was that whole like bad luck thing just like like for for like shits it's like whatever so that was never actually revealed yet. So let me just explain what happens at the end. So he takes the dagger, Shio, and he's looking at uh, Theo funny. He's kind of like, oh, it's too late because at that moment, Soul's light goes out and that, okay, it's done. You know, their time ran out. And so pretty much Shio tells him like, oh, like they're coming. And so then you see these like, fucking black ink or smoke or whatever it is like seeping in and the obsidians come out which was venganza gauss and chupacabra and they are finally like revealed from the celestial binding because they all didn't make the sacrifice auricela is very much alive right now and so then we realize that she must be somehow connected to the obsidians but we don't get any answers yet because mala suerte is nowhere to be found like we do not see the dios like he's gone and she so the the obsidians pretty much like create this like barrier around the semi-dioses like the, the contestants so the parents can't get involved in this moment and there's this like black goo that forms on the ground and it forms kind of like a portal or like an mm-hmm. opening or like a black hole or whatever it is. And it starts sucking in the semi dioses because they're trying to take all of them. But yeah. um, they pretty much do succeed. Like they do take all of them. And it's really sad because Theo is trying to save Chio in this moment. Like he's trying to grab him and stop him from going into the wormhole because he's still like still thinks that that's his friend. But Chio's like, bro get a grip <laughs> like come yeah. on and so he manages to like i don't know like he doesn't want to let him go but Chio ends up going into this black hole and all of them go except nia theo and aurelio and auristela is still like hanging on but she pretty much like saves aurelio from going into the hole by letting yeah. herself be like the sacrifice. And before she goes into this wormhole, she tells them to find us. And then she like disappears into this oh. black hole. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yep. I know. I was like, mm. oh my God, this betrayal hit so hard because Chio this whole time was so like small and meek and I'm just so clumsy and I'm just I just have all this bad luck and I'm just like oh, I ate that shit up I was like I Me really believe you were a little bunny I really thought <laughs> you were and a baby and that fucking friendship I still think that trio was really good 
Yeah, no, it was. It was a really good trio. I really loved it. I thought that they made great friends, like all three of them. But now it's a new trio. Yeah. Fucking um, Aurelio, Nia, and Teo. Yeah, so those are the ones who remained. I'm excited. I'm so fucking excited. You know, if it weren't for the fact that I have a nine to five, Mm -hmm. um, I would have binged this book in a day. Would you? Hmm. Interesting. I I believe it. Interesting. (laughs) I believe it because, you know, you are just such a fast reader and you go through books actually really fast. So I don't know how I do it. I don't either. But let me just say that the ending, pretty much our characters have to find the soul stones or right the soul the soul stones yes. like i don't really know what they're gonna do i think they're trying to find a way to bring soul back or yes s- I, or somehow still commit this sacrifice while finding the other semi-dioses i'm not entirely sure but they're going on a quest and that's how it ended and i'm very excited for it i thought that it was a really good like introduction to this world and I have so many questions about Mala Suerte, though. Oh, my God. Maybe yeah. Mala Suerte and, and Obsidian, like, had a little bit too much fun one night. And that's how <laughs> Shia was born. <laughs> Who knows? But I I really like this ending and mm-hmm. this story. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and tell me your overall thoughts because I know I got you right. Oh, my God. Okay. I I will say, like, everything mm. that we've talked about, I loved the characters. I love the relationship. The character development between Aurelio and Teo is really, really cute. The mm-hmm. freaking friendship between Teo and Shio, I think, is really good because we yes, mentioned is. Um, Teo yeah. is a transgender man and Shio mm-hmm. is still trying to find whether they are... Um, considering themselves male or non-binary and the conversations mm-hmm. they have about that I think are really really good mm-hmm. love it mm-hmm. I don't know what it is though like reading books that have pop culture jokes like throws me off so much mm. and I I don't know why like because I mean I've read books like that before but it always throws me off like when um freaking Teo went into the sauna with Aurelio and um, as soon as Teo came out freaking Nia and Shio were like mm, what are you doing in there? What are you doing there? And then it's like oh you know nothing don't, don't worry about it it's not a big issue and then they make that freaking Vine reference you know the two bros in the hot tub <laughs> and I was yeah. like whoa this is like a relic yeah. it's so <laughs> weird it like throws uh-huh. me off so bad and like, honestly, that kind of gave me, I don't want to say this because I fucking love the book. It kind of gave me the ick. <laughs> really? I thought your problem was going to be the furry joke because, you know, What's obvious wrong with reasons. Furries? No, nothing's wrong with them. I just thought you'd be like, whoa, too close to home. <laughs> Stop, dude. <laughs> dude. Stop. Don't expose me like that. No, okay, but I like, expose you every episode. <laughs> but like. I it, it did throw me off, but I think overall that still mm. doesn't take away from how how much of a strong book this was. I actually mm-hmm. do see myself rereading this probably after we read our bulk reads because, I mean, you know how I felt about, for example, I mean, not saying anything about my rating, but you know how I felt about Under the Whispering Door where I kept rereading parts of it even after I read it. Yeah, That's how I, I feel remember. about this one. But that's how you are. You just like, you just want to stay. You just want to stay in this story. Yeah, I do that a lot. I haven't reread Heartstopper in a while. So I think my hyperfixation is dying. But oh, maybe God. it's going to start with Some Bearer Trials because I am going to rate it a five out of five. <gasps> <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> See, look, I, I fucking knew it. <laughs> I knew you so well you know those times when i say i don't know you i'm lying i know you so well (laughs) cut to me in the next episode bitch i don't fucking know you (laughs) bitch who the fuck is this (laughs) (laughs) who are you get out of my house (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> That's so funny that you say that though about pop culture because I actually made a note because I didn't want to forget this because it happened near the beginning or like near the middle. One of my critiques was the the way that they speak. Um, <clears throat> like they speak very modern sometimes, especially the golds who are supposed to be separate from, you know, the mortals and the jades. So yes. there was a moment when Auristela says, fuck around and find out. And it threw yes. me off. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Why did she say that? It threw me off. I was like, girl, you should not be saying that. And then yes. there was a moment where Nia says, sucks to suck. And I was thrown off again because I was like, I feel like these characters, I know they're young, but damn. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Like, it's like how I, we talk. I know. Why are they speaking like they're humans? They're not humans. <laughs> no, it is. It is a lot. It, it throw And okay. Sorry, I know you're saying your overall thoughts, but also that scene where um, Thale was hiding in the tree and, um, you know, they were trying to get Thale down. It was like, you need to come down. That was like, nah, I'm good. Like, I'm like fine up here. I can live up here. It's like the, the reaction is very like now. Unexpected? Yeah, oh, or like, mm-hmm. yeah, like if if a kid from now was put into that situation, that's how they would. Oh my talk. god, you just reminded me of the part where, uh, I think they were in the hot tub, and Dale was like that he was thirsty with Aurelio, and yeah. he was like not that kind of thirsty. I mean, what other thirsty would there be? And Aurelio's just like. What? what are you talking about? <laughs> it's like thirsty, but like the hydrated version. And it's like, bitch, that's dehydrated. <laughs> Dude, okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. And that other scene, <laughs> that other scene where like, um, Theo was like, why do you always wear your hair like that, Aurelio? And it's like, oh, because, you know, it's part of like my culture. It's like a thing. And it's like, bitch, that's a man bun. Like, shut up. <laughs> I love, I love it though it. it's like it's like it throws me off but i also kind of love it because i feel like okay they're gods but they're kind of relatable i guess <laughs> yes i agree um the one thing that we didn't mention but i think you know goes in with my overall thoughts i really loved aurelio's character 100 percent, a thousand percent what i really felt for him though do you remember that part where it's revealed that he isn't fireproof yeah. And the fact that his own mother would literally burn him because he has, like, scarring in his, like, forearms, which is why mm-hmm. he always wears those, like, gold bands to, like, kind of, like, yeah. cover them. And I just, like, love, I guess the, I guess the characters, like, I love the depth to them. I really loved him because obviously, like, Dale would bring it up. Like, why are you always wearing your gold bands? You're such a loser. (laughs) Like, he would always bring it up. And so when it's finally revealed that there is, like, an actual, like, reasoning to it, like, I just really loved that. And I I really, like, appreciate the, I guess, the thought behind the characters. Because, like, there's there's other things, obviously, with, like, the other characters. But that was just, like, the one thing that I really, really appreciated. One of the other things that I really appreciated was the Mexican culture that was integrated mm. into the story because obviously we had ne- we had well at least I haven't I haven't seen anything like it before and yeah. I just felt seen I felt like and it's funny because I'm sorry we read no, no, Spanish ahead. Love Deception and it was supposed to kind of be like a parody of like telenovelas which is obviously something that we grew up with mm-hmm. and I didn't feel seen then but I feel fucking scene now (laughs) no seriously i just feel like aiden thomas wrote this for us the girlies and i just really appreciate it like i love how much i could relate to everything that was happening and it also i don't know if you thought the same thing but it also made me think like because there's not like any explanations like things are just this and look it up if you need to, I guess. I wonder yes. if people who didn't grow up in our culture or have different cultures, I wonder if it would make it difficult to relate, I guess. Maybe, because cause that whole like candy scene, mm-hmm. you have to know what the candy is to understand it. Yeah, exactly. And why they're always so excited about it. <laughs> I know. The 
fucking part with the masapan where like freaking Aurelio couldn't open it and it kept breaking apart. I was like, this bitch, this bitch never opened a masapan. <laughs> In his fucking life. And he really did it. <laughs> but I'm really excited for the next book. I feel like I would hella pre-order it. I don't know if you know this, but there's actually cards of every character and their parent. Dude, they're the cutest fucking cards ever. I want them so bad. Like the Dude, trading shut cards. Shut the fuck up. Are you serious? Like Dude, I'm looking the, it up right now. They're trading cards and they're so freaking cute. I want them so bad. It has their like strengths at the bottom right corner. Oh my god. I Ooh. obsessed with that shit. I fucking love it. Anyway, my point is I love the characters. I love the plot. I love that I felt seen. So I would also give it a five out of five. Oh my god, so, really? Yeah. I don't know what parts you're talking about with the writing. Are you talking about like the modern shit? Yeah, the modern shit. Mm. I thought that would affect you more than I mean, it, it did a little bit, but I feel like the story is so good. I was like, okay. Yes. I would just look the same. That. If the story had sucked, it would have hella had a lower rating. Because I uh-huh. feel like I've read stories that have that, like, modern type talk. And it just throws mm-hmm. me off and I don't like it. Yeah. No, same. I don't know why, though. Why? Are we trying to just escape completely? Is that why? <laughs> I don't know. I, I did like talk it? about it with my sister today. Mm-hmm. And I was telling her about that. And she was like, yeah, it's a little weird because then it it defeats the purpose of becoming a classic because you're going to read a story way in the future. Like maybe someone reads this 100 years from now and it gets to the two bros chilling in the hot tub. And it's like, why are they talking about two bros chilling in a hot tub? Like They're not going to understand it. And then I, I kind of understood where she was coming from. But then like there's a charm to it, too. Mm-hmm. that makes it like very i mean we just went off on like talking about our favorite jokes like <laughs> there is a charm to it but it's just weird mm-hmm. to get used to i i think it is weird but i feel like a lot of things can still be really popular even when it has things that you wouldn't necessarily understand unless you were in that like moment you know what i mean i mean there's yes. I'm, I'm sure there's nothing i can think of right now but i'm sure there's plenty of things that have popped off that don't necessarily like you can't really like relate to anymore yeah but um yeah i I do agree i think it does have a charm to it and i feel like um people will have a blast figuring out what the hell they were talking about dude we weren't too much of bilingual queens this episode but like oh we really weren't oh my god i forgot about that (laughs) it's in there we're i'm fucking so happy that we both gave this a five out of five we will definitely be texting a lot about this story. I can finally post TikToks about it. <laughs> no, yeah, dude, wait. same. Me too. I was like, I'm not going to post anything because then she'll know. I know how you are. You're going to look at it. <laughs> but thank you so much for everyone listening to our episodes. Um, if you are listening to us in audio form, whether that be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or anywhere you get your podcasts on, thank you so much. If you can leave a review and a rating of five stars, because I mean, it helps, it helps our name get out there. Mm-hmm. And also just, you know, if you want to tell your friends, enemies, loved ones, hated ones, the ones who've betrayed you along the way, <laughs> if you want to tell any of them about us, the best way to um, gain experience exposure is through word of mouth so that would be great yeah and we would be more so recommended if you did give us five stars so we really appreciate it and we definitely appreciate the people that already have given us five stars like looking at it is just so like it really makes me feel grateful that people like like listening to us thank you it does mean a Mm -hmm. lot um to everyone who is watching our video versions on youtube hi thank you so much for watching if you can like comment and subscribe and hit that notification bell to get um sorry and hit that notification bell in order for you to know when we are posting which is usually tuesdays and thursdays sorry it's been a little off but we are (laughs) trying to get back on track yeah and some of these won't have a video version though because we yeah, because aren't we're recording each right other. Yeah. yeah. But we'll we'll get used to it. We will learn mm-hmm. we will learn what to do. Mm-hmm. But um before we end our episode, 
we usually end with a dice roll. And for the dice roll, we um, if we have an even number, we will read a positive review off of Goodreads about mm-hmm. this book. If we get an odd number, we will read a negative review off of Goodreads. And we do not say anything about these reviews. It is going no. to be in the air. And that's where it stays. Yeah, because we're not talking about it. We're not endorsing it. We're just saying what someone else thinks about this story, whether that be positive or negative. Yes. Um, do you want to go ahead and roll the die and then I can look up uh, a review? Yeah. Okay. So I have a dice app on my phone. So let me just click it real fast. I got a two. This review is brought to you by Jana, who gave it a five out of five. And she says, I'm happy to announce that I found my new favorite book. Wow, this was absolutely amazing. Theo is mischievous. He's a troublemaker. He can talk to birds, has wings, and he's a jade. That means he isn't allowed to attend the academy. It also means he isn't being trained for the sun bear trials that happen every 10 years, like the golds have been for a long time. It shouldn't matter because no jade has been chosen to compete for the... um. For over a hundred years, to everyone's surprise, this trial, there are two jade competitors. This book's intense. It's fast-paced and beautifully descriptive. It's got twists. It's full of enchanting mythology. It has Latino, Black, trans, and non-binary representation, and a ton of likable, morally gray, and entertaining characters. I adore Theo as a protagonist. He's often funny and always a loyal friend he's got this childhood best friend to enemies to something that's going on and it's very amusing yet sometimes quite devastating to read about please just know that this book really hits the percy jackson meets the hunger games description though it is also so much more you'll find lessons about friendship and complicated family stories you'll find strong female characters and a society that celebrates trans people Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Dude, I'm in such a good mood. Oh my God. I know. Me too. Even though it's, oh my God, it's 11, 11. Make a wish. Oh my gosh. I got no pressure or anything. What, what's God. your wish? Wait, what's your wish? Now you gotta, I, I, you gotta tell me. What was your wish? I can't tell you. I can't reveal my secrets or else it won't come true. Oh my gosh. My wish was to be here with you. <laughs> why would you wish something that's already coming true <laughs> i don't want you to disappear oh oh i'm gonna get that okay that being said <laughs> note to self um next week we should definitely talk about our goodreads choice awards of 2022 what do you mean we have to choose um for every because i guess goodreads has like um votes that are happening right now and it's for the oh best god. books of 2022 for certain categories oh my god we should do that maybe oh god, that should so be ex- our thursday episode for next week oh my god i'm so excited yes yes let's do it right now go <laughs> <laughs> okay let's just film it right now we're in the future now hello welcome to- <laughs> we just like started off <laughs> We have a beginning and then an end again. (laughs) (laughs) We're in a never ending loop. If this is on, we're still alive. Quick, quick, play the harp. Play the harp. (laughs) 